on the day that I heard that they were going to discipline me and possibly suspend me, it felt almost like I kept thinking, what did it feel like to be a Jew in Germany in the 30s? Because it felt almost as if they were coming for me. And it's rather difficult to define, but there's that fear. And it reminded me of what my dad used to say. He always said to me as a child, you've got to keep a packed suitcase at the door, Margaret, in case you ever have to leave in a hurry. And when I heard about the disciplinary, my emotional response resonated with that feeling of fear that clearly was at the heart of what my father felt uh, when he came to Britain. How would you characterise your relationship with him now, with Jeremy Corbyn? It's a very fine line between being pro-Palestinian, the Palestinian cause, which he's always believed in, and being anti-Semitic. And I think he's gone the wrong side of that line. And I think it's a bit scary as well. We've got this sort of growth of populism, whether it's Trump, whether it's Boris Johnson, and now whether it's the cult of Corbynism, which allows these sort of attitudes to emerge. And that's what scares me. Do you expect now the Labour Party to adopt fully uh, the international definition and to try and draw a line under this and, and move forward? I think, we, we, you know, he's digging himself deeper and deeper into a, a, a pit where um, the Jews just feel uncomfortable. And I have to say to you that it isn't just the Jews, Beth, that, are, that, that, are, that feel uncomfortable with this. When I look at all the letters I've had, the emails, the ones that have been supportive, and there are thousands of them, it comes from what I would class call Middle England. Mm. So people who just think probably like I do. Was it like this in the 30s? Is this, isn't this a bridge too far? Shouldn't we step back from that? So of course he's got to accept the definition. Of course he's got to accept that definition. But even if he does that tomorrow, that will only be the start of a very, very, very long journey in rebuilding trust with the Jewish community. Len McCluskey has given an interview today saying that Labour is descending into the vortex of McCarthyism over these arguments about anti-Semitism. Um, do you agree with that? I mean, he's <laughs> suggesting that these stories are almost being fabricated or people are f trying to find ways to attack Jeremy Corbyn on the issue. Well, I think that, com that just shows how, what in a terrible situation we are, because I would put it to Len McCluskey that my receiving a, um, a letter saying they're starting disciplinary proceedings 11 hours after I had a perfectly legitimate conversation, hours after I had a perfectly legitimate conversation with the leader of the Labour Party in the lobby of the House of Commons, smelt to me of McCarthyism against people who oppose uh, Corbyn uh, and a purge against those people. And I have to say, it felt to me like, oh my God, are they doing this to me because I'm Jewish? So it felt McCarthyist against, McCarthyite against me. Uh, and I don't see it the other way around at all. But doesn't that demonstrate the fact that Len McCluskey feels he can say that, demonstrates the rift over the issue uh, within the Labour Party, which as leader of the party, he has got to start healing that rift. That's his job. That's his responsibility. That's what he's leader of the Labour Party for. Uh, dear Margaret Hodge, speaking to Beth Rigby there. Uh, as you can see, Sky's chief political correspondent, John Craig, joins me once again. Um, John, we've, we've heard from the Labour Party now, and I don't want to steal your thunder here, but I think it's fair to say they're not happy at all. Well, the disciplinary action against Margaret Hodge may have been dropped a week or so ago, but there is still bitter hostility between the two sides in this row. Remember, she was investigated, she said there, the day after she called Mr Corbyn a racist and an anti-Semite during a Commons vote, day after the NEC meeting, uh, which triggered this whole anti-Semitism row. Within minutes of us showing that interview at 7 o'clock, a Labour Party spokesman has said, Jeremy's determined to tackle anti-Semitism in the Labour Party so Jewish people feel it is a warm and welcoming home. But then, the comparison of the Labour Party's disciplinary process with Nazi Germany is so extreme and disconnected from reality, it diminishes the seriousness of the issue of anti-Semitism. 
We all need to work together to build support and confidence in the Labour Party among Jewish communities in Britain. Well, it's that second sentence that's really an angry reaction there. Now, you heard Beth talking about uh, uh, Len McCluskey, the Unite leader there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. He, a little earlier, uh, wrote a blog for the Huff Post website in which he hit out not just at Blairites and Tom Watson, his old foe, but also the uh, Jewish organisations. He named the Board of Deputies, Jewish Leadership Council and the Jewish Labour Movement, accused them of intransigent hostility and an utter refusal to engage in dialogue. Now, that's despite Mr McCluskey backing other trade union leaders who say they should adopt, the party should adopt, the full uh, a, a International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism and all its examples. I mean, just briefly, he accuses MPs like Chukka Amuna, who he names, uh, of what exploiting anti-Semitism to justify his moves to break away from Labour. On Tom Watson, uh, he, who a few weeks ago talked about Labour disappearing into a vortex of eternal shame and embarrassment, uh, Mr. Uh, McCluskey says, we cannot descend into a vortex of McCarthyism. And all this, and a, another fight back by Mr. Corbyn, he's going to the, he's complained to Ipso, that is the newish press regulator, against all the coverage of that cemetery visit in Tunisia. He has complained about, <coughs> excuse me, the Sun, Times, Daily Telegraph, Daily Mail, Daily Express and Metro. He says they seriously misrepresented the event, misidentified, <coughs> excuse me, those buried in the cemetery and underplayed the role of mainstream Palestinian leaders conducting the ceremony. So not for the first time Mr Corbyn is attacking Fleet Street and picking a fight with them. John, many thanks.